we decided we're gonna go back to church. And the foundation that we were raised on, let's give that another shot. Because mm -hmm. in pursuing your dream, and this isn't just for music, you know, oh, sure. in pursuing any career, you give it your best shot, but if it pulls you away from Sunday mornings and it pulls you away from a community of believers, yeah. it just doesn't end well most times. Yeah. And even though we were still walking with the Lord, we loved Jesus, mm -hmm. but we had lost a few of those things and the the evidence and the fruit in your life quickly goes to anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. fear, wow. um, just not joy, peace, love, the things that are promised. The minute I heard Cain's first song, I immediately downloaded the whole album. Oh. <laughs> because honestly, it is brilliant. So we have Madison. Hi. We have Logan. Yes, hello. And we have Taylor. Hi. I'm just so grateful <laughs> that you guys are here. We are too. Oh, thank we you. are grateful to be here. Yeah. This is awesome. And thank you for listening to our music. Yeah, that's really. oh, it yeah. was just amazing. And you know, let me just get one myth out of the way straight away. Because I was thinking, Cain, hmm. what an interesting name, you know, because obviously a lot of time went into this, you know, how, and why would they choose <laughs> the murderous brother <laughs> of Adam? And then I realized, oh no, that's their surname. It is. There we go. Yes. More time should have gone into this decision. It does, um, it no. does seem like we were flipping through Genesis. And when we saw the first murder, we were like, we got it. That's it. We Great it. marketing yeah. plan. No, we just, we thought it would be simple. Like, let's just pick our last name. And it apparently. Is, it is who we are. It is what we are. And there is such a thing as bad press. And we found it. Um, and uh, no, but it, it is, it's been a joy and a journey. All of that kind of aside, we, we're, we're thankful to be known at all. And you know what? If somebody has a question about our name, at least that means they looked us up. So That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> For those who might not be familiar with your music, and if you're not, do yourself a favor. Download mm. the album. It is so good. Take us back a little bit, because mm. you were brought up in the home of pastors. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Tell us a little of your early story. Okay, so we are three in three years, and now being a mom, I'm like, to my mom, Mom, why did you do that? That's wow. crazy. That's so I'm the oldest. Mm. Madison's the middle. Logan's a baby. We're all a year apart. And mom and dad were pastors. And I just got to tell sweet Jill in the back earlier that, um, gosh, you know, my dad, he just thought, I want to come up with a coffee shop where people can come in and we can have a Bible study together. I love that. He's an engineer. And they voted him to be the pastor. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and my dad yes. was like, whoa, whoa, I don't know if you want this. So he just studied the Bible. He, he got saved in college. His life to it, yeah. yeah. And so growing up, getting to be on stage with dad, like now looking back, like what an honor that wow. was to get to just sing songs about Jesus. We learned hymns, yeah. we learned worship songs, we watched this show. Like it's just amazing to kind of see where we are now getting to do yeah. that. How did you know that you could sing and that you could sing well together? Because when I read your story and I realized you were two sisters and a brother, it took me back many years to Scotland because I have a sister and a brother. Wow. And, oh no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> We, we attempted that. There was this little talent show at our local fire station in the summer. And my sister and brother and I, and, and we thought, okay. we're going to be huge. Yeah. <laughs> it did not go well. <laughs> Wait, I kind of think we started the I same did, way. We should the tell The same. Them. Okay, so <laughs> it started out just me and Taylor. Indeed, yes. Um, we, Logan was not in the group. But, I mean, we would play, you know, on the stage. Dad would let us play anything we wanted. I would come up and be like, can I do a special song? I, you know, I, he really let us play with the church, you know? Yeah. Um, but at first it was Taylor and I doing weddings. And by weddings, I mean weddings. You were wedding singers. We were a he nine and 10 year old trailer park wedding. Trailer singers. park wedding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and um, yeah, it didn't last very long. And then- Listen, I still didn't even make the cut to be that. You I wasn't did. even oh. good enough to be in that group. You know, don't put that in your resume. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Cut for the trailer park wedding. Yeah, it was honorable mention, trailer park wedding singer. Um, and I was I was very shy when I was young and, and, and grew up playing drums actually, which was quite a very safe, there was like sometimes literally a plexiglass like force field there for me to, to hide behind. But I agree, Madison, you're, you're making this point that our dad and, and our mom really made it a safe space for us to spread our wings and to get comfortable in ministry. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. think for some people that are raised in the church or raised by pastors, 
you want to do everything you can to get away from ministry and so to true. separate yeah. yourself yeah. from the, the things of church. And then you, you find the fruit of that as an adult, mm -hmm. which is you have no community. You have no desire for godly things. Mm -hmm. you, you have a disdain for godly people. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm thankful that not only did our parents encourage us, hey, take chances. Hey, go out here. And, and because, mm -hmm. yeah. because what you're singing is God's word, because what you're doing is glorifying the Lord, we're not going to take any of that away from you. And I'm just That's pretty so amazing thankful. because yes. so often people in ministry want their kids to behave so it doesn't reflect badly on them. Right. Yeah. You true. know, there's yeah. certain expectations. Mm -hmm. And you're right, a lot of people end up walking further away from the Lord. But the yeah. fact that your mom and dad embraced that is just really beautiful. Well, they, mm. my dad, it, it kind of makes me like emotional to talk about it. But so he painted a mural on the back wall of the sanctuary of our church and it's still there. And he dated it in the signature and it was 1984. I was born in 1992, but I looked at that mural multiple times a week my whole life. And to think that from 1984 until now, almost every Sunday, they were in that building wow. on their mm -hmm. hands and knees, serving the Lord, ser like seeking mm -hmm. his will for whoever would walk through those. It's just yeah. so humbling to me to um, think about the fact that my dad walked away from a great job. My mm -hmm. mom mm -hmm. had a college degree and a job and, and came home to to raise us and they, they put their lives on hold yeah. for what they felt like God called them to do and be, and they're still doing it. They're and it's just like a, a miracle. What must that mean to them now to see? I mean, we'll get to some of your journey and what brought yeah. you to this point. What does that mean to your mom and dad now? Oh, they're the most supportive. You know. I'll tell you one story. I mean, I, I think they're the most proud. They come to every show. Mm -hmm. oh. They came to the shows before they were cool shows. Totally. <laughs> Blue Coast yeah. Burritos. I mean, we were playing outside of tough. anywhere, everywhere. But when I was in college, I was going to just pick a job for the money. I honestly was. Sure. And my dad called me after he saw us sing together. And he was like, you know, you know what you're supposed to do. He said, do not pick a job just because it will provide for you but you do what God's called you to do. And that changed the course of my life wow. to where I am now. And I think when my dad watches us, he he stayed up late the other night and just sent us all a text of like, I am beyond proud of you. And I yeah. can't believe that you're you're doing what we saw in you. All the home mm. videos, always singing, <laughs> always yeah. preaching. We are getting to do that. So they're just so proud. And another thing I love, my husband has tried to talk me into this. Mm. And I remain a resolute no. Okay. Matching outfits. <laughs> oh I actually God. love that about yeah. you. You wear yeah. coordinating <laughs> outfits. Well, yes. thank you. I mean, it was, um, that really dates back to just after the trailer park fan <laughs> day. Um, but it was, and you can kind of see us here now. If you look past the fact that these are the same colors, they're not very much the same outfit. No. And I think when we were trying to, wear the same style of clothing. Mm. It was an absolute mess and really made us look less together. You yeah. know, if you if we I remember being like walking from even just like the van to the stage, I'm like, stay close, stay close. My outfit doesn't make sense if you're not close. <laughs> you know, like it's just like I look insane if no one sees that I'm a part of a group. Oh <laughs> like He's referring just, to the bow tie and suspenders. Yeah, yeah it's just like more accessories is not making it more unified, okay? Like I'm, I'm really... just under here, okay? Somewhere. <laughs> My shoulders and neck I can't hurt. believe you stayed in this band yeah. this long. Oh, that's crazy. You've been, yeah. We put you through it. But there, it has become easy and tough in some ways with the matching outfits. Easy because you just know, even if I'm like head to toe in neon green, I'm gonna look like part of a unit if yeah. we all show up wearing it. Yeah. Um, but there are times where if what you wanted to wear doesn't fit the night before you have to fly out, then you're buying Rit Dye at Hobby Lobby and mixing. <laughs> I, I literally did that this weekend. Because oh you, yes. 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 you can't go to the mall and be like, okay, so um, do you guys have any orange jumpsuits with sequins on them. They, they don't. They don't have they that don't. in stock. No. So yeah, you have to take what you've got and make it the color. <laughs> and that was for me, by the way. Um, <laughs> shout out to all of you guys for not having it. But yeah, I mean, I think, and, and when you take it, frankly, now as we've gotten into it and we've leaned into it, we find just with all this stuff that God really did have a, a much grander plan, even for something as simple as our yeah. matching outfits, because people come, I mean, it's so sweet, but we'll meet people at shows who will say, I didn't feel like I had anything to belong to. Mm. And just wearing the same color and you making me, and that's what we're hoping I, is I that, that if yeah. you wear what we're wearing, we view you the same as us. I hope you yeah. view yourself that way. And it's just like, so like, 
rewarding. It feels yeah. so good. We've been, so on our website, it'll tell you the color we're wearing each night. Oh, you're and, kidding? And people That's have been crazy. showing up in the color, like truly 99% of the audience. It's, so it's we'll have, really let's say amazing. this spring we played in Bowling Green. It was all red and everyone, some kids even like, you know, spray their dyed their red. hair red. And, <laughs> Sorry and, to the parents out there. Yeah. We're, uh... But it's just, I mean, it feels like you're going to a sporting event. It's so oh, fun. Yeah. It's so but fun. There's something deeper you're right. It's not just that you're wearing what the cool people are wearing. It's like you're part of something. Yeah. And I think ever since COVID, I think people feel more lonely, yeah. more isolated. Definitely, right? Yeah. But to feel like we show up and we're, we belong to this, we're part of this, mm. it's like a small picture of the body of Christ. It's yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, and it, I mean, that's a gift from to us from God because it was it was kind of just a way for us to unify at first. And then we found that it's like, Madison has said this, from stage before, I'm borrowing your your phrase here, but I just learned it from you that it's become in these days that it feels like the people that God called to do ministry are the people on stages with microphones, platforms. Yes, exactly. And and part of this unity is not that, like you said, we don't want you to just feel like you're part of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We want you to understand you are a part of what he's doing. Something bigger. And it's it's bigger than us and it's bigger than you, frankly, but it's, it's bigger than all of us. And if we can yeah. He said, why will you worry about what you wear? Mm-hmm. And so this was kind of a way for us to stop worrying about what we wear. We'll just yeah. make it one color and wear whatever you feel comfortable in. <laughs> Mental note to myself before I go to the next Kane concert, check the website. Check the website. <laughs> yes, <laughs> will do. So you go from singing in church and then I, you were homeschooled, I believe. Mm-hmm. But then did you go into like a regular high school? We, we did. did. Yes. Oh, what was that like? <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, yes. uh, <laughs> have, have you seen the TV show Man vs. Wild? No. Where he just like drops into the wilderness and survives. Well, Whoa. I feel like I need school. to address anyone like homeschooled considering going into public school. There are some differences that you might. So I, you know, in a movie, when they're walking down the hallway, the bell would ring, time to go to class. In reality, if you were in the hallway when the bell rings, you were going to get you go to the principal's office. You're late? You're late. Oh. And so I, my very first day, I couldn't figure out how to do locker, but they expect me to know how because I'm, you know, I'm in eighth grade. You should know how to do this, right. but this is my my kindergarten, yeah. you know. Oh my gosh. So I like, there, so I there were words the and phrases we were going home and Googling because we were like, I have never heard any <laughs> of this before. Sheltered by God's <laughs> mercy. Yes, Thank you. Yeah. So it ended up being great, but there was just a, uh, oh, um, having to go to the bathroom. You have to ask the teacher. I didn't want to interrupt class because oh. they're talking and I just have to go pee. So I'll just leave. And then they're just like, where are you going? And I was just like, "I'm." you were talking. I didn't want to, you know, you can't oh, just leave. So that's that's ch- that's good for those of you who are homeschooling parents about maybe to send your kids to high. Those are important things Tell to them. know. Tell yeah. them. <laughs> maybe we should, <laughs> we should like make a plea, you know, yeah. please somebody make a TV show that accurately represents what high school is like, which is just boring and kind of a waste of time. Sorry, we love education. We're here for it. But I would assume the people that are watching, if you're yeah. homeschooling, it was, that was why we were homeschooled was because our parents said, we want you to know who you are before we go offer you up to a group of young people to tell you who you are. And yeah. I think that, that that played such a big part into, not that we didn't have our own struggles and insecurities sure. in adulthood, but at least in that season of life, I had a decent sense of who I was supposed to be, you know? And I think that yeah. there, the, the sense of a conscience and the sense of God's voice whispering in your ear, that has become afar, yeah. I think, for us. And, yeah. and so I'm just thankful that like, not like you've said before, not like we do everything right, not by any means. Not the idea that you, it, deep down in your heart, you, you yeah. know what's right well, and wrong. I think it gave us a, a chance to be tested in a way yeah, because true. you learn all these things, but at some point you have to decide, is this who I am and the right. decisions mm-hmm. that I choose totally. to make? And I loved having them a part of high school. So when I was a junior, sophomore, freshman, you know, we're there and <laughs> we that. we That's went fun. through the insecurity phase. It was a good thing to go mm-hmm. through and you couldn't just phone it in. You really had to decide Mm. which way am I going? And I remember when we all decided, hey, we're going to start a Bible study at our house. And wow. it was an overflow. We had roughly 70 to 80 kids just fill our wow. living room. And it, for the first time, it wasn't, oh, this is something because it's what my dad's doing. We had a chance yeah, to say, true. we're starting something for ourselves. And it was it was amazing. It's a huge part of, um, 
I think high school going so well for us, you know? Sure. So. But even that speaks volumes because when I read that even in college, you shared an apartment or you shared <laughs> yes. a house. I remember in high school, when I was about to go to the same school as my sister, she said, you cannot come to this school. <laughs> and if you do come to this school, I'll pretend I've never met you. <laughs> And, it was oh, the same, and I'm like, that's fine. But the fact that you yeah. guys have stayed, and if my sister's watching this in Scotland, <laughs> I love you very I love much. It. And I'll give you a bigger Christmas present. Yeah. Yes, you yes, remember yes. the fire station. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, that's incredible to me. Mm. that Because often brothers and sisters, at certain points, they just kind of go their own ways. And yeah. they don't. But the True. fact that you stayed together, Aww. that we was kind of huge. We had a little tradition. So we all had different classes and different stuff and we would call it lunchtime movie so we all didn't have like a class during lunch college, and call it in college and um yeah so we would all every day just sit down put our books in front of us whatever we're working on Come just watch a movie yeah watch so we it really yeah. i mean we it's lovely we've been yeah, like this I mean, before we had to be for though like on a tour bus, oh. it really is like having bunk beds. And yeah. so honestly, <laughs> sharing a space, I yeah. guess that was God's way of like, okay, get ready yeah. for what you're going to do for the next well, 10 years. A mental health professional might call it codependence, let's say, but I do think that- <laughs> It's not what we call it. Yeah, no, we call it- We call it, it cute. We call, we call it, it tradition. Family. <laughs> but um, but I, I think that we've said this before, that uh, my heart goes out to anybody that's trying to be a solo artist right now. Mm. This life is- Tough. So very difficult. Now, on the other side of that coin, it has so much benefit that it feels silly to claim that it's tough. But at the same time, there are things that human beings probably shouldn't go through that you go through mm -hmm. in, in pursuit of this. Mm -hmm. And if we had to do it alone, I don't think we'd be sitting yeah. on this couch talking to no, you one and two point. if, yeah. we, no if we didn't get to do it together. I just don't think I would do it because I think mm -hmm. that there's so much more joy and reward and victory yeah. and doing this together. Oh, we yeah. get to look at each other every now and then when things will kind of slow down, we'll be in a back hallway somewhere and just like, we've made it. I mentioned at the top of the, the show that I downloaded one song um, and it was, it blew me away so much that I had to down, you know, go back onto iTunes and complete my album. <laughs> wow. But it was the song Rise Up. Yeah. Oh. Tell me about that song. Did you guys write that song? Yeah. We did write that song. Yeah. Wow. We wrote it and... It, it was so funny. We, you know, we're, we're new artists. So we're going to the songwriter and we want to impress this writer and show yeah. him really good. He's a big songwriter, yeah. We have a mental block for, I would say, four hours. So Stop. we are just sitting Been there. there. We can't think of anything. Stop. And the more that time passes, the more you feel, you know. Um, but Taylor, she pulls out a little voice memo that she had recorded. I mean, you can, I don't want to speak no, for you. No, could tell. Going. Yeah, but she, she was like, oh, I want to sing something about Rise Up. And at the same time, a guy across, he was like, I was thinking about like doing something about Rise Up and Lazarus. And it was like, okay, that's a God connection oh, here. He really does. That's the thing about God being the creator and the creative process is that the more you try to will yourself to think of something, it doesn't come. Yeah. 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 So you really have to be gifted the song by God or gifted an idea. Or at first I was like, losers, oh, yeah, I was, losers. I was in the guy's <laughs> refrigerator eating his leftovers like, yeah, I'm checked out. I'm <laughs> sure I'm not helping you guys and I'm hungry. So, <laughs> But I think it's crazy. I mean, there's a line in the song, take a breath, you're alive now. And I think that song was written in 2019. And then we all know that 2020 was just unbelievably difficult and it had to do with breathing in your lungs. And I think it's amazing to me. And that was my, that was a, a real life, just like example of having faith in God, that if you'll just write and listen to every small voice and every small mm -hmm. thing that he tells you to do, that song meant so much to other people. Oh, and we yeah. had no idea what was coming around mm -hmm. the bend. And then even for us to sing it and not stay in that dark place, we thought our career was, here we go, mm -hmm. it's over. Yeah. We had trusted in God and, and given up everything that we had just invested in to sing about him only. And then COVID that hits. song, COVID hits, mm -hmm. and the song, I mean, it, it's like we threw it into a hole. <laughs> it, no one heard that song. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Failed. Yeah. yeah. And then for it to do what it did, and then to to see what that song means to mm -hmm. so many people. I experienced um, some kind of psychological tinnitus in, over like the last year, oh, wow. specifically mm -hmm. with this song. Wow. And I, started to have such anxiety, borderline panic attacks, because I'm thinking, this is our biggest song. This is a song people came to hear, and I can't, I couldn't sing it in the key. I was all over the place. 
And I had a huge breakthrough. I mean, listen, we were on tour with Casting Crowns and they all just laid hands on me and prayed over mm-hmm. me to be healed, one. Mm-hmm. But I just had this breakthrough in this moment of feeling like, okay, it was just another reminder of like, okay, mm-hmm. you can try your hardest. Mm-hmm. You can do your very best. You can sing it perfectly on key. And if God's not in it, it doesn't matter. It, yeah. it won't make a single bit of difference to anybody that hears it. Because, and this was the kind of revelation of it, is God was still using it and moving on the nights when I was off key. Mm-hmm. He was still, <laughs> so he was still <laughs> ministering to the people in those rooms on the nights when I would walk off the stage and feel like, well, I totally blew it. Yeah. I've, Isn't that I've, amazing? I've, and that, the, it's but amazing. you can tell, that's the one thing I could tell listening to some of your songs and going on to YouTube. You, there's a difference between a great song and an anointed song. Oh, wow. oh. And there's just an anointing on your That's live so awesome. Something that nobody else knows about you. And maybe you'll have to apologize to your parents for after. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That okay. Kind of thing. Yeah. That's good. Something that nobody else. I have one. Else. You have one? I do have one. And it's not my parents. Do you have one? Oh, no. Who are you going to I'll be default? apologizing to my wife. Oh. For breaking our news. We, we are having a second little girl. Yes. So, I can't believe it. Yeah. Nobody knows that. Nobody knows. Don't tell if you're watching this. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell. Especially not my wife. (laughs) Yeah, she's asleep. Please don't tell my wife. She's asleep. But that's awesome. Yeah, we're. I'm so excited. Oh my god. The way that she broke the news to me is, we were like out on tour together, and she's like, "Man, my stomach feels bloated." I'm like, "Oh, are you pregnant?" And she's like, "Yeah." I was like, oh, okay. I didn't really think and we, we were going to say yes. We weren't telling anyone. And she was very careful to make sure I didn't. And then she just like, yeah. <laughs> I love my wife, my daughter, my daughter to be. Oh I'm gosh. excited. And we're, oh, hey, it's just what? cute. We, we're doing it. We're making it. We're that's having a family. Just beautiful. And, yeah. So we're. So, let, let, I mean, that's a new dynamic. You know, for years, you know, you're, you're together. I know you had yes. a break where you were maybe like five years in country music mm-hmm. and not really. But then, you know, you come back and you, well, actually, tell us a bit about that I journey. Ooh, I think that's come. huge because um, you enter this competition, Dave Barnes, we all love yes. Dave oh, Barnes, love the man. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you, you win and you realize yes. you're supposed to write a song. Was that kind of the beginning <laughs> of the... Oh, gosh, you're talking about how difficult of a day Rise Up was. <laughs> we so have to they, write our very first song and we have to do it in 48 hours. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. And I, now, I literally, now I've never written a song this. before. I was like, what am I, what am I supposed to do You'll be coming here? around. Uh, yeah, it's like, literally, I'm like, hand me that harmonica. That'll help. <laughs> so we, we joked, we told Dave this later, um, but his tour manager, when he met with us, was like, you guys are really fumbling this opportunity. He said that we because we didn't have a band name yet. We didn't have any merchandise. And then we wrote a song the day before because they said you had to play an original song. So wow. we were so, so unprepared. But that at least gave us an open door to say, maybe we could do this. If people mm-hmm. voted for this, mm-hmm. maybe there's something. Yeah. Maybe there's an audience for us. And then that became the process. So our mother's biological father they had kind of had an estranged relationship, came back together, oh. and he worked in country music. And so he was like, hey, I see that you guys are trying this. I could help you in country. So we're like, okay, let, let's give it a shot. Right. I mean, the, the timeline is we opened for Dave Barnes. That venue brought us back to do our own show. Wow. Like, I don't know, like yeah, a month later. Cool. And our grandfather was in the room that night. Mm. And when he saw the show, he said, again, we didn't have a band name emerge because this wasn't a career for us. Right. I just didn't we think. All got I'm degrees, like, yeah. great. After I succeed and have a music career, then I will fly to the moon and then I'll be a professional football player because these are all the <laughs> things that aren't going to happen for me. <laughs> they just weren't. It just wasn't in the cards. And so when he said, I can help you, but I can be most helpful if it's country music, we kind of looked at each other and thought, okay, well, we weren't going to do this at all. We can still, you know, I would I would say to myself in my prayers where it was the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And I always thought, okay, Lord, someone's going to stand on this platform. Yeah. Maybe this is what you have for us. Yeah. So we did. And after five years of doing our hardest work and being our most faithful, we learned a lot. We yes. grew a lot. Oh but in terms of making it, it going, yeah. we weren't making it. And so that was where it was like, all right, well, do we take these life lessons and go back to our respective corners and jobs? Yeah. And this is a part of the story that you hit on earlier, which is siblings tend to go yeah. afar. Yeah. And this was a thing that kept us together. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we didn't, Madison was married. 
Mm-hmm. Taylor was married. And, and tell a getting, little bit about your husband. Like you were getting engaged in. Oh, yeah, my these. husband plays professional baseball. And basically oh, wow. that just means that you travel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Mm-hmm. And I think for the first time, it's just, it's just sad when you look at your life and you're like, did I miss this? I really thought God mm-hmm. was like leading us mm-hmm. and we were following where we needed to go. But looking at each other and just saying like, guys, I think this is over. Like we've had a great we run. We tried really oh, hard. Oh my gosh. It was tough. The, just the, the like immense, death. yeah, it really did. Mm-hmm. Like you were kind of grieving like, and then do I move back to my small town? Do I move to New York with my husband? Do we, everything was gonna change the minute we mm-hmm. said this is over. And one thing that I'm the most proud of is that we decided we're gonna go back to church and the foundation that we were raised on, let's give that another shot because Mm -hmm. in pursuing your dream, and this isn't just for music, you know, in pursuing any career, you give it your best shot, but if it pulls you away from Sunday mornings and it pulls you away from a community Mm -hmm. of believers, it just doesn't end well most times. And even though we were still walking with the Lord, we love Jesus, Mm -hmm. but we had lost a few of those things and the the evidence and the fruit in your life quickly goes to anxiety, depression, Mm -hmm. fear, um, just not joy, peace, love, the things that are promised. Mm -hmm. And so we jumped into a church and we were like, we don't care what goes on here. All Honestly, three all three yeah. of us, yeah. we said, again. we're going, <laughs> again, we're going yeah. to the same Hold church. <laughs> and we didn't tell them that we led worship because we kind of just wanted to like leave that mm-hmm. behind and maybe just like, um, I was a greeter. Logan was on the coffee team. Yeah. Max yes. helped with nursery. We just wanted to serve and wow. get back to our roots. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like a perfect full circle moment, but they found out somehow that we had done music and they said, do you guys want to lead worship? And what did that Gosh. feel like to uh, be back on a platform, but then for a different reason? Well, you know what's crazy is, and we now it's like we tell that story as if it were again kind of a unit. I remember the first Sunday, if I remember correctly, I played guitar. I was like guitar two. I didn't sing guitar <laughs> two. And then right, I was just playing acoustic guitar, and then began this sort of carousel of one or two of us were up there, but we were never up there together until. Mm-hmm. It had been months we've been doing that version of it. And then we all ended up on the, there at the same time. And it sort of was like, oh, wow, you know, I remember, here we are. I mean, I, I cried the whole time. So what kind of worship leading is that? But it was this Maybe joy. Yeah. And it was like, mm-hmm. I just remember thinking, guys, we can do this. Maybe mm-hmm. music was just supposed to mm-hmm. be us three on this stage where we sing to God and maybe we never travel again, but maybe this, cause I was like so fulfilled for the first time in a long time. And I think just the joy of like, okay, mm-hmm. we can do this, we'll stay together. You know, we don't yeah. have to break apart. It was like, this is the solution. It just gave so much purpose to what we had been through. Yeah. And God's plan was clear because there was someone in that church. Mm-hmm. Yep. Who so, was one of <laughs> so our, the There was, so, uh, our, that's what's our really now funny manager, too. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. he went to that church he met with us and, and he was like, send me some music. And so we sent him some of our old our country, country music. music. And he meets us, he's like, how do I put together what who I see on stage is mm-hmm. so joyful and what this music is so- My like, dog is uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, You know, arduous. Um, he's like, I want you to just do a fast. Don't, you know, don't try to write music. Don't think about music. Don't do, just pray and like ask God wow. what you want us to do. And so, you know, it had been on my heart, like, okay, maybe I just need to quit music altogether. And then it was like, okay, well, what if I tried to write a Christian song? But if you're being realistic, I am 28 years old. I do not want to start over sure. and I haven't made it this far. And so then I go through all this stuff and let's rebrand and rewrite all these songs. Mm. Maybe I need to just be realistic. And the, mm-hmm. you know, mm. so we got together and we wrote our first Christian song and it was just come. It was just like, wow. where you, I used to think that maybe writing Christian music would be limiting because it's limiting to one subject, but mm. I feel like it just blew it wide open. Yeah. There were so yeah. many things we hadn't got to talk about Mm. because of leaving out the name of Jesus by putting him in, it just opened the doors. Wow. It yeah. was, that makes me so happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost like every other genre of music is limiting. But when yes. you start speaking about the creator of the universe, it's Come like on. doors wide yes. open. Yes. yes. We, um, we signed our first 
record deal after all this time, about three months after we wrote our first Christian song. <laughs> wow. If anything shows you about this getting in line with the will of God, yeah, what it, I you know, that. not that it makes everything easier, but you can just feel this wind behind your back oh, of when you're right. in his And flow. the pleasure of God. Yeah. You know? Right. And what, I mean, it makes me think as we tell this story and I wanted to like, I want to tell the you guys in the praise, like a new part of this. I'm sitting here thinking about how thankful and maybe it's, Again, to those parents at home that are, mm-hmm. maybe you're homeschooling your kids. Maybe you're, when you were telling that about going back to church, I remember I was on a tournament baseball team and I never got to play on Sundays. And that was always like when the championship game was. And it was because my parents said to me, it is important yeah. that you don't miss, you don't start missing church flippantly like this. Yeah. Yeah. And now later in our mm-hmm. life, we find that when we decide that missing a gig on Sunday is more important than losing the community mm. that we have in the local church. I, I guess I've never made that connection, but I'm just like, wow. I remember kicking and fussing and crying because I yeah. wasn't playing championship baseball games. <laughs> and those were the seeds that were planted that wow. saved my life. So, And now in our headlining tour, one thing we're trying to implement and maybe change the culture of touring is that typically you play on Sunday nights mm-hmm. and you don't go to church. We have been attending each local church the church where we that we're play playing. Yeah. Oh, I in love each that. city. Yes. And I can just feel a, a big difference. It almost gives you that that momentum to like keep going and that encouragement. It's just amazing. People in the church don't realize that you have not showered. So you really you oh, get yeah. off of the bus <laughs> that's pulled up in their parking lot. They're, you know, they're coming in with their kids for Sunday morning. You're brushing your teeth and they're saying, you know. It's but. Very, there's, there's an 18 wheeler with a picture of us in the parking lot wrapped around the side of it. It's very telling that no one recognizes yeah. me based on that picture <laughs> and how I look on Sunday morning walking in church. Bus yeah. hair. Yeah, Bus they're hair. like, you look like you're kind of related to that guy. So, you that guy's cousin. El Strash. <laughs> yes. You mentioned the second daughter, but I believe you all have little ones. Indeed. How we, has we that do. shifted life on the road? Woo. And drastically. So, I mean, yeah. drastically. <laughs> yeah. Ma- Madison more, you need has more said, candles. More, more candles, memories. that's right. Oh, there's oh, smell. Yeah, there's bless the smell. it. We, um, Madison has said this as well. I think it is um, it is the thing that has kept my feet so firmly planted on the ground in this season of life because <laughs> we have a lot of great things happening on our behalf. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, glory to God for all of that. But there's nothing more humbling than like rushing off stage in intermission and then changing a dirty diaper. Like right. it's just... Yeah. The, a, a, if, <laughs> if the ground is all level at the foot of the cross, it is also all level at the diaper foot of, pail. Di- at the diaper yes. pail, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like in some ways, so the same and so different. Yeah. So we are, I honestly thought before having a child that like having a kid would end my career because it just doesn't seem feasible. And mm-hmm. so that's another provision of God is that we've been able, you know, as Stevie Taylor's daughter was four weeks old and Cal was seven weeks old when our fall tour started. We had um, cribs put in where the oh, beds in the bus, are in yeah. the bus. So it's just been very different because you're a lot more mm-hmm. sleepy, but so the same that we get to do it. We get to sit around a little bonfire with our bandmates mm-hmm. and have our monitors right there. Yeah, and so. I'm I'm so proud of these two um, because we, we made a decision right away it, going into that tour that regardless of, of what the finances said, we decided we will let God be the provider. Right. Our families will go. And I think that, That's fabulous. that took a lot of um, faith, I would say, on, from a financial standpoint, just because yeah. that, that wasn't always going to be feasible. Yeah. And that would not certainly make sense on paper, but it was a decision we, we had to make. Right. If we were going to continue to, if, if we were going to stand on a stage and sing about being family and mm-hmm. trusting God and doing these things, yeah. we had to do that backstage. Yeah. And so- I'm thankful and God has just made margin in our lives and in our, mm-hmm. our career for that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that was a that was another kind of tough test right there. It was like, okay, are we are we gonna be about it? Are we gonna yeah. talk about it? Are we gonna be about it? Do you have in your little ones at the moment two boys and a girl? Oh, yeah. uh, two, two, two girls, girls and a boy. Two, yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, sorry. No, no, it's Kane 2.0. Hair <laughs> Kane 2.0. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh, boy. What would that be like if as they start to to grow up, you suddenly find them harmonizing together. Pushing us out of a job, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be trying to put them in breakout single category. Be like, no, I'll go, you know. Um, no, but Taylor's already been trying to teach the baby's perfect pitch. So she'll, wow. she'll like we'll hit, you know, hit we'll C see. on the piano and sing. So 
Madison, tell me something about Taylor that she wouldn't tell you about herself. Ooh, Fun. okay. Um, like positive or negative? Either oh, one. That's a joke. <laughs> That's a joke. You can do one of each. You can do one of each. Um, <laughs> one of each. And on the next one. Taylor makes a lot of sacrifices. Mm. Agreed. And I think that she loves to be like outgoing and fun and all this stuff, but she kind of has a lot on her shoulders as far as like directing and, and leading mm. us. So because her husband plays baseball, she has the least amount of time. So every time we come home from a tour stop, she has to fly wow. to see him, yeah, fly, back, fly back, get back on the tour. So I feel like she makes a lot of personal sacrifices to make sure that everything mm. stays running. So awesome. I hope that I hope that one day you get to and chill. It, this is gonna make me cry. I was so <laughs> mean to you earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's okay. But it's just a lot to yeah. to carry and I feel like she's having to do a lot of things by herself and pretend like mm. it's not tiresome yeah. or mm. that it's not hard. Okay, That's Taylor. Really nice. But we see you, girl. Tell me something about Logan <gasps> you wouldn't tell you about. Oh, no. Oh That's hard because I will tell you about myself. <laughs> we love my that about favorite you. subject. <laughs> um, I think Logan is like, he is going to make sure that everyone is happy in the room. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like that is such a burden sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, and it, mm -hmm. it's everybody. He is almost not even thinking about himself in the way that I know this is what makes other people happy and he is going to uh, accomplish, like do whatever it takes to accomplish that. That's and he, I feel like he does that all the time. He's got two girls, two yeah. sisters, you know, and a wife and yep. a kid. And two kids. number two daughter on the way. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Logan, tell so us something girls. about Madison that she wouldn't tell us about herself. Uh, that she wouldn't tell you about herself. Madison is... I would say probably the smartest and the strongest person in the mm. in whatever room she walks wow. into. Mm -hmm. um, now she wears a, not as many hats as this one, but she wears a lot of figurative hats. And Madison will play the the role that needs playing, and she serves people in that way. Mm. And I just really like that's very endearing to me that she doesn't have to prove to herself how smart she is or how talented mm. or how powerful she is. She just walks in and serves. Mm -hmm. In whatever way needs doing. So, um, but I, she's just. But she knows. Man, she's really smart. Yeah. And I love that. So, you know, I often think of, of Joseph, you know, who as a young boy knew there was a special calling and anointing on his life. But then suddenly everything seemed to go wrong when your own family turn against you and, and then traffic you to Egypt and then you end up in prison. But you know what's interesting about that? If you read his story in Genesis, at every devastating thing that happens, you read this, and God was with him, and God was with him. And you get to the end of his story and you realize if he hadn't spent all those years in prison learning the language, mm. he would not have been ready at the moment when Pharaoh said, bring him out of that cell. Wow. And maybe that's where you find yourself. You're in a season of feeling like you're just in a giant waiting room. You've had so many things that you wanted to do, so many things that you felt God had called you to do, but it seems as if every door is slammed in your face. I just want to remind you of one thing. God is with you. It's interesting in the book of Acts, I think it's Acts chapter six, it talks about Joseph and it says, and God was with him and prospered him in all he did. 12 words, but it took 13 years. So often we think if God is with me, things are gonna fall into mm -hmm. place immediately and it's gonna make sense and I'm gonna sense God's presence. And maybe you're in a place where you haven't felt that in a while, but I want you to remember the faithfulness of God that goes from the very first word of the book of Genesis right until that final glorious statement at the end of the revelation given to John, that God is with you and His timing is perfect. And just as Logan and Taylor and Madison, in a sense, took all the gifts and put them back on the altar mm. and said, Lord, you know, you gave us these and we're laying them back before you. And if that's not your plan, we are good with where you have us. That's my prayer for you. God is bigger than the people that you feel have slammed doors in your face. Mm -hmm. God is bigger than the people who don't understand you. God is bigger than the people who've spoken against you. Mm. So I would just love the privilege of, we all would, just to love the privilege of, of praying for you. Mm -hmm. That that gift of faith, that seed of hope, 
but begin to bear fruit in your life. And know that when, when God is for you, who can be against you? Let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now for our audience. I pray for every man, woman, and child who has stayed with us through this hour and, and listened as these beautiful brothers and sisters have shared their story of your faithfulness and the path and the joy. And Lord, I know that there are many people right now who feel lonely, who feel separated, who feel like they don't belong. And I ask, Lord, that your presence would be made so real to them right now, that even as they listen, that they would be able to open up their hearts and say, I believe, help my unbelief. And so we just ask, Lord, for your for your special blessing and anointing to be on all of our, of our faithful viewers and partners, that in these days where so much bad news circulates, the good news never changes, that you have won the victory, that because of you, we win, and we have a glorious hope that nothing can destroy. And we thank you and we praise you in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen.